Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting we are uh, doing today is called River Glow and it is a 14 by 14 inch painting. We, uh, we did the study um, last week and uh, the study is really nice looking little painting. I uh, noticed that a lot of people have been checking that out on YouTube, which is cool. Um, this is one of these cases where I feel that the uh, the large one was, you know, came out just as just as good as the uh, study. It was a bit touch and go, though. Um, for some reason, when I was uh, doing the large one, the the way I like to work is I do the study, but I basically look at my my uh, original reference that I've composited uh, when doing both the large and uh, large painting and the studies but I don't really refer to the study as I'm painting uh, my large painting so uh, I could I could try and generate that large painting just from the study but what I prefer to do is is take in that inspiration from the reference and um, where the study really comes uh, into play uh, in regards to the larger painting is when I'm basically finishing the larger painting. I do not refer to the photographic, uh, uh, well, I should say composited photographic reference anymore. I just look at the study. And um, this was a case, though, where the larger painting was. I don't know what I was thinking. I was just my whole color sense. So sometimes too, I use two different little um, monitors for putting up my reference, and uh, that can have an impact. Um, but I just, uh, you know, finished kind of blocking in color on the large one, and was uh, leaving the studio to, uh, you know, go use the restroom or something. And I looked at the little study there uh, against the wall, and I was like, wow, it has so much nicer color. It's so much more saturated, and uh, when I came back, I, I, I basically got my brush out and I really injected, and this was on the first color pass, I basically just started injecting a ton of color into the large one. And it was a good thing I did that because um, you can't really, in the second pass, you know, I always have an intention of, uh, of laying paint on thickly and being bold, but uh, my tendency more is to refine things uh, that are already there. So it seems like anytime I try and lay in something real heavy and direct and different um, on that second pass that basically I'd almost have to just paint the entire whole new painting again so it's a really different mindset and um, uh, I'm gonna make a little note about that I think I have talked about this before but you know that's nothing new I'm always uh, <laughs> repeating myself as you guys know but uh, first uh, versus second pass that'd be a good one to talk about you know we got a lot of these uh, I have to um, write down these ideas of uh, things to uh, talk about on the blog um, because a lot of times um, you know it's time to sit down and do something and if I have a, a good idea a good theme uh, the blog will come out much better since you know I don't do any prior preparation that is my prior preparation basically is coming up with a concept that I want to discuss um, and you know, as far as repetition goes, I, you can't worry about it. I, I if I was uh, the kind of artist that was um, worried about uh, repetition being a problem, I wouldn't keep painting landscapes over and over. I'd be one of these people that would paint a still life one day, and a landscape the next, and a portrait the next. And there's some wonderful painters that do just that. Uh, I'm not one of them. I'm, uh, you know, my personality is. Uh, uh, I like to select one type of thing and go very, very deep into it, as deep into it as I possibly can. And that's been uh, not just painting. I mean, I've had two uh, two careers. I was a manager uh, of a manufacturing uh, operation that did, uh, you know, framing for uh, hotels and things. I did that for about 13 years, and I know everything about that. I took it as far as it could possibly go. And then my uh, second career... Uh, uh, that's my dog Denny uh, second career was as a, a commercial illustrator and uh, I really took that as far as you could go too and um, I know everything about it and um, 
this is my personality this is how I am with landscape painting well, actually one of the reasons I selected landscape painting is that I think I, I can pretty much uh, keep working on this the rest of my life I don't um, I don't see getting uh, complete comprehensive mastery of this um, medium uh, happening anytime soon I've been at it for ooh, started in 2008 so we're, we're at nine years now and I've done a lot of paintings I haven't uh, someone asked me how many paintings I did this last year I honestly don't know but when you run the studies in um, especially uh, you know when I do these projects like the 25 days of tonalism or the 100 days of tonalism uh, you know it adds a lot of paintings to the uh, the total but those paintings are studies uh, after another artist's work and so I see those more as uh, learning uh, exercises I mean they are still paintings that I did and uh, you know I, I certainly have a love for them but it's not the same thing when you're generating your own your own work uh, from you know perceiving uh, a scene in in reality in nature and then uh, creating a painting uh, so uh, it's just just different but uh, as far as original paintings go I've been averaging about a we'll say uh, studies and large paintings probably about oh god I want to say six or seven a month uh, of studies and larger paintings although that's starting to tilt heavier towards studies because I'm doing studies of scenes and choosing not to necessarily execute them larger um, this is something I've been playing with I used to just be very mm, automatic about the process you know I'd, I'd basically uh, you know, come up with uh, you know maybe 10 scenes I wanted to paint and uh, I was actually even doing the, all, everything is either 8 by 8s or 8 by 10s for a long time and uh, I have my 5 by 7s my 5 by 5s I go through and do all the studies and then I go through and automatically just paint a larger version um, you know uh, the, in the succeeding weeks after doing the study uh, but these days um, I like to uh, just do the studies that I think are, uh, you know, what I've learned, I guess, is what I'm talking about, I'm trying to say, is that at some level I think you know when a painting's just not going to be very good. And if you really listen to your intuition, you could maybe avoid just not doing that painting at all. And, uh, which means I don't have to waste a uh, board on a large painting. Uh, I have lots of little boards I can do the studies in. You know, you know the studies uh, actually sometimes are, even if I choose not to paint it larger, they're still quite nice little paintings and uh, perfectly saleable, and I'd be perfectly happy for someone to enjoy them in their home. Um, but uh, and I've got one that I'm working on now that's, uh, like I said, I mentioned it, I think, yesterday. It's this lake scene. And we'll see if I can... I, I, I'm on the fence. I think I can... I may have to go three passes on it. I have to... I'm, I'm thinking of almost going in and doing a, a repainting in a, in a more opaque fashion right from the top. Uh, kind of a different approach. As opposed, like I was just saying a minute ago, you know, where I kind of... I go and I'm just moving things around very subtly. Um... I'm thinking of maybe going in and just, you know, doing a redoing the whole painting over the top in a sort of bold, um, direct way. That might be the answer because, uh, and again, all these things they kind of bubble up um, just below your conscious thought, and uh, you know they're motivated, but of course by the intention to to do something great. But we have a lot of things to get in the way of that. Normally, uh, the the number one thing that seems to get in the way of that is. Uh, our ego um, and the thought that uh, in my case anyway that I can persevere and always get something awesome done and uh, that sort of touches like uh, the blog post I wrote yesterday was about illustration versus inspiration and in the illustration realm that certainly will carry the day quite often because you would use any means at your disposal um, many times I would have the uh, reference from three or four different artists right in front of me inspiring and influencing the artwork that I was doing um, also I would be working with other artists who would maybe be doing aspects of the illustration 
or rough sketches or things like that and I would be coming in and doing finishes and whatever you uh, had to do to get the job done was the order of the day um, but the job got done and it had to be good and it had to be saleable otherwise you know there was absolutely no point in doing it um, and so this w ability to persevere carry through and make something awesome is uh, a big part of who I am as an artist and that really uh, it can get in the way, you know, if things really aren't such a great idea in the first place. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's also, I wouldn't want to trade that, uh, you know, uh, for anything, but it can get in the way. It needs to be navigated. Um, just one of the complex little angles of landscape painting. Well, anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, for um, River Glow 14 by 14 you can check out my work at landscapepainter.co.nz you can follow the blog there I'll be back uh, next week with another study uh, meanwhile take good care have a happy new year and stay out of trouble